He also gave a young man named Steve Jobs his first job. In addition to Atari, Nolan founded the multinational restaurant chain Chuck E. Cheese. Many other cutting-edge startups have his fingerprints on them. Currently, Mr. Bushnell is taking time to share some of his wisdom and has published his first ever book called Finding the Next Steve Jobs, How to Find, Keep, and Nurture Talent. And I've uh, looked through some of this. I love it. Love his philosophy. Nolan Bushnell, welcome to the Bob Rivers Show in Seattle. How are you doing? Well, happy, happy to be here. Seattle, right. one of my favorite cities. Well, thank you. Uh, and by the way, I, uh, I'm i in awe because I played Pong. And so just to talk to you, sir, is oh. just it, what an amazing, like my life at this point. Hit, hit me with lightning. Run over me with a bus. This is this is spectacular. <laughs> You've hit the pinnacle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and by the way, at the time, even I thought, this can't be all there is for video games. <laughs> it sure is simple. And I couldn't understand. We had a square ball, not because we like to square ball. I know, I know. <laughs> but I saw, like, wow, this is what is coming. I always looked at the future and thought, this is amazing. And I couldn't believe how addicting it was. Tell me if you knew that. You know, I knew that video games were, or, or games run by a computer were possible to be the best games ever because you could have time and you could have score and you can have sound all kinds of wonderful stuff and i i knew that they were somewhat addictive yeah i uh you know and eventually went on to and by the way i don't i don't play them today so they're not really great greatly addictive or i'd still be an addict uh, but at that time, you were, uh, you, you were, this was Atari, and you were hiring a young man named Steve Jobs. We'll segue right into what this book is about. How did, uh, how did you first meet him? Do you remember him from the very beginning? Absolutely. Well, Steve actually found us. You know, we had a really quirky corporate culture, and, uh, and it was a fun place to work. And uh, Steve thought that we were a cool place to work and he found us and and i i knew the minute i met him that this was an extraordinary young man because he really had this intensity and passion that i've always looked for in people mm. you can train for everything except cre- and, you know passion and once you have passionate people all the rest of it just fits into place. Now, you also, uh, I've skimmed some of what this book is about. You're also counterintuitive in a lot of ways. You, 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 don't look, you look for people who are in some ways difficult, uh, unfocused, ADHD, not a bad thing, and, uh, and, and maybe not necessarily the easiest people to get along with. Tell me a little more about that. I think a company that is a little tiny bit chaotic or anarchistic uh, is a creative company. Uh, creativity is a lot about breaking rules. And uh, a company where everybody's arm in arm singing Kumbaya sounds to me like a formula for mediocrity. Mm. And so I, I like companies to be a, just a little bit spiky. So let's say I'm interviewing someone today, and, uh, you know, candidates come in, they sit down, they want to kiss your behind, they want to they tell you they're great for your company. You throw those people out of the room, right? Not necessarily. All right. What, what I'm looking for is some, you know, I, I ask weird questions, and I try to find out, are they passionate people? Do they have, do they have um, this desire to move the world? Um, do they have hobbies? A lot of times you can tell tremendous amounts about people by their hobbies, what they do on their days off. And, um, you know, if somebody says, you know, what, what are you passionate about? And they said, oh, I love to watch TV. Ooh, wrong answer. Wrong answer. Okay. <laughs> now, now, by the way, if you ask me that question, I'm a beekeeper. Good answer. Or are we still talking? Great answer. Ah, yes. I'm feeling good now. <laughs> uh, and well, That's uh, really a good one because it's out of the box. It's, uh, it's something that you have to... to get a lot of personal knowledge about yeah that's right in the right wheelhouse you have to learn by the way here's a question you asked i gotta i gotta quote this one you tell me because i can't figure out the answer uh this is a question these are questions that he's asked at job interviews here's one a girl is walking down a road with three friends one is an animal one is a vegetable and one is a mineral 
What is the girl's name? Spike. <laughs> oh, I have no idea. A girl's walking down the street with three friends, one animal, one vegetable, one mineral. Dorothy. Dorothy? You're right. Scarecrow. Right. Is that right? Is yes, he right? Is. Yes, it is. <laughs> hey, we want to start a company together? <laughs> How do you know? Oh, wait a minute. One is an animal. The That's cowardly Toto. lion. The cowardly lion. One is a vegetable. The straw man. Tin the, man. The, or the, uh, the scarecrow's a vegetable. The he's straw. He's straw. He's a vegetable. And the mineral's the tin man. The mineral's the tin man. Boom, baby. Boom, baby. <laughs> <laughs> How many people get that right? About a third. No kidding. Yeah. Okay, Don't so that's the good. the head of the class. So <laughs> sitting down in front of you definitely is going to be a challenge. Uh, what about when someone struggles? Do you like to see what they do when they struggle? It, like, do you have to get it right to continue, or do you just have to behave in an interesting way that shows you're passionate? Exactly. It, see, all I'm looking about is process. I'm not looking for answers. I'm looking about process. Hmm. So if I don't know the answer, I should just take my pants off and continue to play the game. <laughs> Something interesting. Uh, Maybe not the process they want. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's the, uh, and by the way, the book is all about uh, really cool things uh, when looking for, uh, for talent in people. And then how to nurture it. How do you nurture, say you've got these great people around you, how do you make sure they continue to be productive? Publish them. Basically, when I say publish, creative people want their ideas into the world. And uh, if you have, uh, you know, the best way to lose a creative is to never do what they think is the right way. Mm. You know, if they come up with a product, say no. Uh, they come up with a new business process, say no. That's a good way to lose them because creative people want to create. And uh, if everything they do ends up on the cutting room floor, they're gone. And it doesn't matter if some of it is a failure either. you got to keep putting things out there, right? I mean, Steve. Absolutely. And, and remember, Steve Jobs had a lot of failures. You know, the next computer was pretty bad. The Lisa was bad. Mm-hmm. The Apple III was bad, but people only remember your good ones. <laughs> when you talk about the next Steve Jobs, uh, oh, I don't know how close you were to Steve later in life. I assume you, you must have uh, known him. How sad is it for the world that we lost him so young uh, compared to you know the things he could have done? Oh, I think quite sad. Mm. Uh, you know, it's uh, you know, he he was a he was a national resource. Is Jeff Bezos a guy? Like, I don't know if, he's, if you want to say the next Steve Jobs, but here's a guy who's mixing things up, just bought the Washington Post and is, uh, you know, taking his industry, selling things on the Internet. It has become this massive, uh, the biggest that there is. Is he, is he that kind of a thinker, you think? Absolutely. I, I have so much respect for that man. Uh, he is, is, you know, step by step by step by step doing everything right. And uh, and trying stuff, and that's that's the important thing. Two quick questions: Microsoft, big big company, uh, you know, having a changing of the guard now. They're probably looking for the next Steve Jobs. And Apple, who had the last Steve Jobs, you know, has to s keep satisfying their investors. Are these companies crippled by being fully mature companies, or can they innovate and come up with the next great groundbreaking thing? If they hired you, what would you t say to them? Oh man, I. I can think of 20 things that Microsoft should be doing that they're not. Uh, I can think of 30 things that, that, that Apple should be doing and they're not. It's, it's really, it's corporate culture. And, uh, and you know, sometimes it, it's as simple as defining what they, what they're, they want to be. And, uh, you know, Microsoft for a long time, has been a fast follower, not a leader. And I think they have to figure out a way to become a leader. And the only way they're going to do that is to start reading science fiction. <laughs> really? And, and trying to make some of the things happen. It's all been described. Gene Roddenberry. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, fascinating, Nolan. If you're ever in Seattle, come in and sit with us in the studio. Nolan, Nolan Bushnell, that's all the time we have with him. The book is called Finding the Next Steve Jobs, How to Find, Keep, and Nurture Talent. It's available now on, uh, what's that website that has books? I can't oh, remember. Oh, 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 uh, the Nile. The Nile. <laughs> the Nile. No. Yeah. Nolan, nice to meet you. Hey, great being here. Bye. Dorothy. I'm so proud. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? You know what gave it to me? <clears throat> what? Three friends. Right? You can't have a friend well, that's a vegetable. Well, no, you can't. She did. You, she, she said, you know, a, a girl's walking down the, Straw the road. Straw being a vegetable is tough. Though. That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. But three Straw. Friends.